All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to start my lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha, Kordash, the Barn City Apostles, and Elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the elected nation of Israel. This is a Ratazah, <clears throat> once again from the Great Millstone GMS Atlanta camp, with another uh, video. All right, and this uh, video is going to be based upon this uh, story or this um, article that I came across. All right. From a uh, website called endtimeheadlines.org. All right, endtimeheadlines.org, where this uh, individual, you know, he puts up a lot of, uh, you know, stories dealing with prophecy. I think it's a, you know, I think it's a pretty good website for brothers to check out from time to time. You know, for you know, for the person who's behind this uh, website, you know, they know a little bit about what's going on. You know. But, you know, as we're going to read in this article, you know, they, you know, they, they um went off as far as the beast, you know, mentioned in the book of Revelations. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to get into the headline. It says more statues appear at U.N. headquarters in New York that resemble what was revealed in the book of Revelation. All right. So if you don't know the uh, U.N. headquarters a building in New York uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was revealed that they had a uh, matter of fact, when you scroll down. All right, there we go. This is a this is a statue that they got in front of the U.N. building, you know, which is supposed to be. I think they said it's like a jaguar. Or some type of cat with a with, with um eagle's wings. All right, which we know in the book of Daniel, which Lord willing will will get that. It mentions a uh, lion with eagle's wings, which goes into uh, the Assyrian Babylonian uh, Empire. All right, so I'm gonna just read a little bit from this and uh, just get a couple of scriptures. It says, uh, "It says all throughout history, statues have." had deep significance to those that put them up. In some cases, statues were erected to commemorate a conquest or a pivotal battle. It says in other cases, they were set up to honor leaders of historical importance, but even more often throughout history, statues have been constructed for spiritual reasons. All right. <clears throat> it says in the Western world, the worship of statues is very rare today, but the global elite are still uh, are still obsessed with decorating key landmarks with quote unquote art that has very special significance to those that are in the know. OK, and us, you know, who are uh, in this truth. Uh, all right. That, uh, you know, follow you. How about you? shot and that do the work, you know, us being the prophets. OK, the Heavenly Father has. Revealed the secrets unto us, man. Pursuing the Amos chapter three, verse seven. You know, so really, you know, you got these, uh, you know, so-called whistleblowers. <clears throat> you know, you got certain Edomites, you know, so-called white people that know certain things. But the real ones who are in the know are the men of the Lord, man, the prophets. It says it is not a it is not just a coincidence that capital cities are all over the planet are adorned by extremely bizarre statues. Every single one of those statues has a meaning and the vast majority of the population is totally oblivious to what really is being communicated. Right. Which is true. You know, the majority of the population, the masses of the people are totally clueless as to what is going on, man. It says last week I posted an article about a really rich statue that was just put up right outside the UN headquarters in New York, right? And that's the picture that we just looked at right here. So why would they put up a statue like this, man? You know, which of course in the scriptures it mentions a lion with eagle's wings, but we know exactly what they mean when they put this up. They're basically telling you, you know, that we represent the beast. All right, now I'll uh, read this point here. Uh, let me jump down to this part. It says, as I pointed out in my previous article, this new statue is reminding Christians all over the globe of the beast described in Revelation chapter 13. 
It says, and of course, the beast of Revelation chapter 13 represents the Antichrist. All right. Or the anti-Messiah, which is which is which is not true. You know, the beast represents the uh, Edomite system, the beast system. All right. NATO, the EU. All right. And the UN is a, is a part of that as well. All right. These these are. Uh, uh, <clears throat> there's this cluster of, of nations, these European nations that have, uh, you know, that have basically come together. All right. And it's all represents the beast system, man. So the beast is not just one person. The beast is not because that's that's what Christians think. Matter of fact, let's uh, let's get that. Christians believe that the. Um, that the. Uh, Antichrist is uh just one one being like it's one man that's going to pop up <clears throat> that's going to come and he's going to you know be wicked and evil no there's there's many antichrist or anti messiahs all right and we're going to read that let me see if it'll come up here no it's in first john slakia anti right <clears throat> First John uh, 2 and 18, it says, little children, it is the last time, right? Last time, meaning it's the last days, man, which we're living in the last days right now. It says, and as ye have heard that anti-Messiah or anti-Christ shall come. See that? So the Christians, <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure if you ask, you know, Vocab Malone and his cohorts, Who's the Antichrist? They think the Antichrist is this one uh, one individual that's going to rise up wearing a suit. You know, he got a bald head and a mustache and he's going to come. And, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, man. It's going to tell you right here. It says, even now, there are many anti-Messiahs or Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Right. So we know that the the uh, we in the last time based upon there being many anti-messiahs essentially you are you are you are anti-messiah or anti-christ if you come against this truth let's jump over first john 5 and uh I believe it's the 19 verse <clears throat> first john 5 and 19 and we know that we are of the most high and how do we know that we are the most high us you know us being israelites of the hopeful elect how we know we are the lord because we understand his word man all right we understand these scriptures and we hear it. We we hear the word of the Lord, and that's pursuing the um. I can't remember where it said, but I, I know it's in Saint John, where the Lord said that uh, he that is of the Most High heareth the Most High word. All right. So those that hear the word of the Lord, all right, you hear this truth. This truth resonates with you. That means that you're of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So it says, verse nineteen again. And we know that we are of the Most High. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. You see that? So there's a there's a there's a remnant that's of the Lord. Okay, pursuing the Psalms uh, chapter four verse three is a is a portion of Israelites who the Lord has separated unto Himself. Meanwhile, what the whole world lieth in wickedness. Going back to First John uh, two and eighteen, we just read, man. There are many antichrists. All right, so that's why the whole world is wicked, man. So the antichrist is not just one person, man. So going back to the uh, article, all right, and this is why I mentioned where I said that it went off. Revelation chapter 13, <clears throat> where it speaks about the beast. That's talking about um, the Edomite uh, power structure, all right, NATO, the EU, all right. Excuse me. Matter of fact, let's, uh, let's, let's, get, let's get that. Revelations, excuse me, Revelations 13. And um, Revelations 13 and uh, let's start at uh, one. It says, not, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Right. The beast represents the, uh, uh, the again, the beast system. It ain't talking about the Antichrist. All right. It's talking about the power structure. Or the so-called white man, the seven heads being the seven represent the seven empires that he that he's had. All right, the Greeks, the Romans, Germania Major, Germania Minor, 
all right the uh 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 the Spanish the French in uh in Great Britain all right and the ten horns is the uh European Union it says and upon his horns uh ten crowns right why because they were because these are uh 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 kingdoms or rulerships it says and upon his heads the name of blasphemy and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard all right so now in this um this post here is why this individual put his article together because that looks like a leopard there but I think it's supposed to be a jaguar uh I think he mentions it I might have skipped past it but but yeah, you, you know, you brothers and sisters see the picture there. It looks like a, it's supposed to be a jaguar, according to this, I think the last article I read that this that this guy put up. But that it looks like a leopard too. All right, so it says it says the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and also too this is this is describing um also uh, uh basically almost like a timeline of Esau Edom's rulership because. Who is the leopard? When you read the prophecy, the leopard represents Alexander and the Greeks. All right, which is pretty much the um, the uh, genesis of the beast system. All right, that's that basically was the first Edomite rulership was the Greeks. All right, so it says the first it says uh, well, I saw it was like unto a leopard, which is the Greeks, and the feet were as the feet of a bear. All right, which the feet represent what the end or the last. <clears throat> All right, like you read the prophecy in Daniel chapter two, dealing with the uh, statue that Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream, the feet and the ten toes and all that that represents the end. So the feet, all right, or the end of this of this system is going to come by the way of those Russians. All right, the bear represents Russia. Okay, and that's how the uh, the system is going to be destroyed, man. The Russians is, is going to come against uh come against America, you know, come against the uh the uh b system as a whole it says in his mouth excuse me as the mouth of a lion all right which is uh represents great britain which of where uh that's where america comes out of america comes out of great britain <clears throat> and the dragon which is the roman empire gave him his power and his seat and great authority see that so this current b system it thrives off the the power and in, in, in the spirit of the ancient Roman Empire, man. See, that's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about one uh, uh, one individual is going. You know, no, nah, man. It's a whole it's a whole setup, man. All right, and then of course when you go down, you know, it goes into the MOTB. All right, which we all know what that is, but uh, yeah, this is just showing you, man. This this, this the Lord. All right, scripture say the man's goings are the Lord. So the Lord put the spirit on the whoever to put these statues up to basically let you know what the hell's going on, man. Prophecy is happening, man. All right, the the the, the beast system is here. The beast system is in effect. <clears throat> All right, the uh, so-called white man is basically showing you, which ultimately is Shahab Hashem Shah, but he's showing you that look, this is it, man. This is prophecy. All right. You know, and then the article goes on, all right? Okay, they, they mentioned something else here. It says, it says, uh, are we supposed to understand that we will finally have a global, have global peace if we would just hand full control over to a world government headed by the United Nations? When I first saw the statue, I was immediately reminded of the writer on the white horse in Revelations chapter uh, chapter two. Let's, let's let's see what it says. Read more. I'm, I'm just curious. Okay, this is another article. Let's see here. It says uh. All right, I want to read this part. And then we'll go ahead and sign off soon. It says the fact that the writer in Revelations chapter two seems to be a male. All right, let me start up. Slack here. 
It says, when I first saw the statue, I was immediately reminded of the rider on the white horse in Revelation chapter 2. It says, and I saw when the lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard it was noise, thunder, one of the four beasts saying, come and see. And I saw, uh, behold, a white horse, um, and he that sat upon him had a bowl, and the crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering to conquer. That's talking about Yahweh Shai. All right, because Yahweh Shai, right, the white horse represents uh, uh, basically uh, righteous power or pure power coming in a so-called UFO. And the bowl represents war, man. He's coming to bring war to the earth. All right. It says uh, the fact that the ride in Revelation chapter 2 seems to be male and, a, and the rider of the peace monument is female would appear to rule out any link at first glance. However, I looked up Revelations uh, 6 and 2 in the original Greek and it's not clear whether the rider is male or female. Interpreters have always assumed that the rider must be male and so male pronouns have been... Right, so this, you know, these Christians, man, they don't, they don't know, they don't know how to break down the scriptures. The one on the white horse represents Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, Isaiah 40, uh, 47 and 3 says, I will not meet thee as a man. All right, it's coming to bring vengeance. And then it, it, it expounds further. All right, if you're confused about who's on the, on the white horse. Revelations, uh, I believe 19 goes into that. Revelations 19 and, um, right, <laughs> Revelations 19 and 10, and I feel like I had his feet to worship him, this is John the Revelator, all right, uh, basically, you know, bowing down to the angel who was giving him the, uh, the, the prophecies, and he said to me, see that thou doest not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that had the testimony of Yahweh Shai, worship the Most High for the testimony of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. Verse 11, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. See that same vision or the same uh, thing spoken of in Re Revelation chapter uh, six that the God's going to that article. And he that sat upon him was faithful, was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. So how, how can you confuse that with a male or a female? It's telling you straight out here is it's a male, man. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with the, which that means um, that, 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 that Yahweh Shai's name, which, you know, the elders went into it, broke it down, brothers broke it down. That means the Lord had a, a name of, of, a, of a particular rank that nobody else has, man. That's what it means that no man knew his name. That don't mean we don't know the name of the Lord. Like, we just got to call him Jesus Christ because we don't know his true name. No. That means that his name, Yahweh Shai, is on a high level, all right? That, that that reputation that comes with that name, all right, is 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 beyond anybody else's name, all right? 13, it says, and he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Most High, all right? Which is one of his titles, because essentially Yahweh Shai is the Word, man. See? So there's no confusion about who was on the white horse when you read the book of Revelations, man. It's talking about the Lord, man. So this to show you that, you know, these Christians, you know, they'll bring out certain points. They'll bring out, you know, certain, you know, articles and things of that nature. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, getting to the interiors of prophecy, man, they ain't got it, man. You know, yeah, Seven year apocalypse. I mean, you know, they just all over the goddamn place, man. But yeah, I just want to, you know, shed some light on this, on this, uh, on this article. You know, I've seen it popped up a couple times. Thought I'd just, you know, do a little video on it. So yeah, man, we in a time, basically, we in a time, uh, you know, uh, Daniel's, you know, Daniel seven, that 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 final beast, the dragon. You know, Revelation thirteen, as we read, man, they they putting it right there in your face. <laughs> right, they putting it right in your face, man, by by erecting these uh these different um statues and monuments, man. You know, so once again, the word of the Lord is being verified, man. All right. So, Low Willis was an edifying video, giving our praises on and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah Bashem Racha Kodash.
and uh, Lord willing to the next lesson, we're going to say Shalom.